Hello guys, welcome back. This is David here. We have a, uh, another raw class at the uh, CEG Dealer School and today we're going to introduce the table. We're going to do a table introduction. Yes, everybody is welcome. Anybody who needs a little intro to the table. Uh, did they go through this with you guys? This is your first day, second day, second day. All right, so they probably started, Becky usually starts with like, you know, basic car mechanics. You guys shuffle, picking checks, that kind of thing. Okay, now we're going to do is introduce the table, all right? So uh, what we're going to do is welcome to, uh, first of all, welcome. This is a, a typical blackjack table at a casino. You'll see here one, two, three, four, five, six spots. Sometimes you'll only see five spots, okay? But six spots, five spots is sort of regular, right? And I'm going to start from the outside in, and we're going to go over all the pieces of this table so you know the terminology. If ever a supervisor talks to you, they talk to you in the terminology of the table, okay? So the first thing is the bumper or the rail. This is referred to as the bumper or the rail. It's on the outside. It's for elbows only, basically. Elbows only. You'll have people who come up to the table, they want to balance drinks on it. And you have to say, no, no, please, don't balance your drink on it because guess what happens? If the drink falls, your table's out of action. So if, the, if a drink should fall and spill, especially if it gets in the checks, you have to close the table, all that action has to move, and that's on you. So I've been to casinos where if you're not proactive, they will they will write you up. They will actually make, it's a warning, because it's up to you to let the customer know no drinks. Uh, normally, a table will have a little uh, cup holders, you know, or they'll have them built into the table, or they're on the side, yeah, exactly, for them to put their cups and just let them know. Even on a dice game on the bumper, you know, you'll see people trying to put a big old cup on there, these drinks that they serve them, and you got to put it on the rail. Okay, after the bumper, between the bumper and the bedding spot, or circle, okay, this is called the apron, the apron, okay? It's not like underneath, like you have a normal table apron. The apron of the table is literally from the bumper. Uh, to the bedding circle or bedding area and that's important because a supervisor may come over and they'll see that a player has their checks here okay like maybe they just want a hand and they haven't pulled their checks back okay You're, the, uh, the the supervisor will tell you push that off onto the apron and that just means to push their checks back okay so that way this money here can't be confused with a bet or a double down or a split you know, a lot of people have a tendency just to leave their money here so just make sure that money is pushed onto the apron, okay? The other thing to keep in mind on a on a game is that this is your game. This is your game. You have to have presence on a, on a game. You own this game. Even though the customers are visiting and you want to provide service, you have to be proactive in letting customers know, you know where their checks need to go, how they need to be on the game, you follow? So it's okay, it's okay to communicate. Uh, casino business has rules. It's not always the customers are always right, okay? Some businesses, like uh, if you're selling t-shirts, customer's always right, right? Customer wants certain size, certain color, this kind of thing. Uh, but in a casino, that's not true. There's, there's the lines, you know? So you have to be able to communicate those lines. Okay, moving on, we have the betting circle or spot. In this case, uh, this, this layout came from Texas, so they had the spots like as a you know picture of a, a Texas, but typically it's a circle or a square. Um, many times they've, they've gotten rid of the squares actually, there's a few reasons for that, but anyways, uh, you'll typically see a circle. Now, on a blackjack game, all bets have to start in the circle, okay, in order for you to have a bet, in order for you to be in action and play the game, your money has to start inside the betting, uh, betting area, the betting circle, okay? This is, this is not a bet, this is not a bet, this is not a bet. The bet has to start here. If they don't have money here, they don't get cards, you follow? So if someone has money, like let's say behind the circle or behind the area, uh, you have to let them know or ask them, would you like to make a bet? And if they say yes, that's my bet, you can go ahead and move it into the circle. You know what I mean? Or just have them, ask them to push it into the circle. But without a bet in the circle, no cards, okay? All right. So before you deal, you have to make sure everybody has their money situated, okay? All right, so that's one of the triggers. Okay, uh, next up, from the betting circle, you're also gonna see side bets. Lots of different side bets these days, okay? The side bets will differ from different casinos. These side bets are too. Lucky Lucky is pretty popular, busted sometimes. Uh, but you'll see there's a few of them here. Uh, there's plus bonus, there's a three card plus, hair square is popular. Now, many times you'll see, you'll have a cheat sheet right on the table as to what those pay and what the conditions are. You can learn them very quickly, all right? 
The difference is, is how the casinos manage those bets. And we'll teach you that as we go. Okay, this is not that class. You'll have a class where we talk about how you manage these bets, how they get, how they get collected, how they're paid, this kind of thing, okay? But be aware that almost every casino now has a main bet and side bets, okay? So there's different different procedures for dealing with the side bets. Some some side bets are have, you have to wait till the end until the dealer turns over their cards, right? So let's say you have a table of two side bets. You might have one lose early on, right? That can be you can figure out early on, and then one that has to wait, like the bust bet, okay? Uh, so anyway, so there, those are dealt. So there you go, betting circle, betting area, and then the side bets. Okay, inside of the betting circle, betting side bets is the insurance banner, okay? This is the insurance banner, it's on every table. It tells you what insurance pays, okay? In this case, it pays two to one, okay? This is the furthest a person can reach in when they're baking a bet. If someone's gonna bet insurance, they bet the insurance in the insurance banner, okay? directly in front of their bet, okay? There is a situation where you can actually insert two bets of the exact same value, and then you would put it in the middle in front of them, in between the two, if they're betting two hands, for example, you could bet in the middle, that's another class, we'll show you that, okay? Uh, but this is the insurance banner, and this is the furthest the person can reach. They cannot reach anywhere past the insurance banner, okay? So you have to be very careful that people aren't putting their hands in this area, You'll, you'll, a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people that are brand new to the game, you'll pull out money for change, run it down, and before you even have a chance to you know, stack it up and call it out, they're reaching in, they think it's their money. You know, you pulled in their money, you're pushing out money, and they're like, they're reaching in to take it, because they see that as being their money, you know what I mean? You have to say, no, no, excuse me, wait a second, I'm gonna take care of you, I will, I will take care of that for you, okay? Um, again, you got our presence on the game and let them know, okay. Uh, inside the insurance banner is the shuffle pad. This is called the shuffle pad or the dealer's workspace. Okay, this area, shuffle pad, because guess what? You shuffle here. And even with machines that have an automatic shuffler, you're still going to do cuts and things like this. Uh, and it's still referred to as the shuffle pad, even if you don't do a whole lot of shuffling. Some casinos, you're, you're never really going to shuffle the cards. You're only just going to do cut cards and put everything in but it's still called the shuffle pad, okay? The shuffle pad has an invisible line down the middle, okay? It's the in and the out. The in is on the left, the out is on the right, okay? In, out, okay? In is on the left, out is on the right. Anything you take out of the rack is gonna go on the right side. Anything that comes into your table, whether, whether it's chips, money, even credits or fills, Okay, your security guard, when he's coming to fill your game, he's gonna stand on the left side behind you. Supervisor's gonna be on the right side. You're going to put in what's called a, um, what's it called, the fill rack? Oh my God, I'm having a little, I'm having a little uh, bird cage. He's gonna have a, what's called a bird cage. It's a little plastic container, it holds chip racks. He's gonna put it here, and then you're gonna push those in. So you're gonna take those in. So 